All right, Lima. All right. Welcome back again. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We haven't seen you in a while. Yep. So we finally, after how many months now? It's been like... It's been since nine April. Nine months or something? April, May. So we have the autopsy results for Amanda. Yes, we do. Which just came a couple of days ago. Uh, tell me what uh, what you know. Yeah, so the reason that it took so long is because there was a lot of uh, lack of documentation because Amanda was homeless. And so basically uh, what they used was they did the autopsy, they looked at her medical records, and then uh, Larry and I also sent in your videos to kind of show her condition from the drug use and the, the beatings that she took. And we also had some, some photographs. Um, and so I'm just gonna read it word for word of what we got. Um, the cause of death was marked as a seizure disorder. Um, Amanda never had seizures prior to being homeless. And um, they believe that it was post-traumatic seizure, dis uh, post-traumatic epilepsy, but they couldn't mark it as post-traumatic epilepsy because of a lack of evidence. So they couldn't tell if the seizures are from past drug use or traumatic brain injury from the assault since the assaults were not well documented. And then in brackets, they put police reports or hospital records. Um, and so they just marked it as a seizure disorder. If they had gone the route of doing post-traumatic epilepsy, if the, um, if the traumatic brain injury and the assaults were well documented, they would have most likely marked it as a homicide. So um, that was a major wake-up call for all of us because it basically illustrates what we were saying in the last video that people shouldn't be allowed to be homeless and that, you know, in Amanda's case, the fact that she was using, that she was allowed to use drugs for so long and that she was abused and that none of that, a lot of it wasn't reported or, or documented, um, those, these people are in danger and it's not okay to just, you know, like let them be because at the end of the day, they really don't know how to help themselves. So there is a lot of things that I think a lot of people would be mind blown to know and I think one of the things that we talked about last time, or just you and I over the phone, is how crazy it is that I have all this information and I feel like it's common sense. But when I talk to you about it, you're always so surprised. So um, it costs us, for each homeless person, it costs about $100,759 to keep one homeless person on the street for a year. Um, so the reason that the costs are so high... How much was it? $100,759. That's the average of one homeless person on the street for a year. Wow. So um, those costs are, you know, a jail, getting picked up, getting put in jail, released, the police being called, ambulance, overdoses, hospitalizations, and on and on. Um, so the homeless are high consumers of public resources. So a lot of our tax dollars ends up going to you know, pay for them basically to remain on the street. And the best case of this was a man called, uh, they called him Million Dollar Murray. His name was uh, Murray Burr. And he um, accumulated over a million dollars in resources in the state of Nevada. And ultimately he died homeless on the street. Um, so, this is a major problem. I've had a lot of people write to me and tell me like, you know, we love what you do, we're, we support what you do, but unfortunately, we don't think that you're gonna be successful because there's so many people making billions of dollars in this industry and, um, you know, the big players in this don't, don't want people to get better. And um, I completely disagree with that. If you actually look at, like, for example, California, there's, uh, as of 2020, there was over 160,000 documented homeless people in the state. Um, so that if we do absolutely nothing, that's the co that costs us uh, $16 billion, $100 million, like way over that number, um, to do absolutely nothing at all. So a lot of the issue with mental health is that it's an invisible problem until now, you know? Um, nobody's really 
um, a lot of money is being poured into the issue, but the relapse rates are so high. And then people just get so severe that they end up in Amanda's condition. Um, another thing I want to point out is Amanda was receiving Social Security Disability Insurance. She was receiving about seven, almost $700 a month. Um, and so if you look at the money that was being given to her as a check, obviously it wasn't doing her very much good. You know, if we could take the, those funds and we can spread them out and scale what we did for Amanda, it would end up costing the state about $32,000 per person um, to house, feed, and give them mental health support where they would end up in a situation like Amanda where she was going back to school. So you spoke about in one of the other videos recently um, about how the brain is affected by addiction. Yeah. That was so, so interesting. Can you, can you talk about that again? Definitely. So last time we talked, um, we were talking about how if you looked at a brain specked image, you would see little holes in the brain and those holes are not actual holes. They're, they're areas where blood is not flowing. Um, so one thing that I really wanted to point out is that you can actually see dementia in your 20s. Um, you can see the the brain start to decay in your 20s. And um, especially in Amanda's case where there was so much damage done to her brain and so many others, um, and addiction can do that. You know, the, the, a big problem with helping a lot of the people that you see on my, on my videos or people like that is the amount of money that's required. Yeah. And you're, and you're working on something that might somehow help and, and help others that, that need help with mental issues, right? Absolutely. And fundraising is a full-time you know, it's a full-time thing. Um, it takes a lot of time. And then also a lot of people don't have a lot of money to put behind something um, when they're struggling. So we came up with a supplement. Um, and so again, focusing on nutrition first, focusing on brain healing. Um, and so it's called Brain Rescue and it has about 40 uh, vital nutrition um, nutrients for mental health, um, just a, a nutritional boost for your brain. And um, the proceeds of that go to buy one, gift one. So for every box we sell, we donate one to someone in need. Um, and then the remaining proceeds go towards hiring more people to respond to all of the inquiries that we get. And then um, pushing out uh, the scholarship program. So um, I'm not sure if you saw the last video I put up of Amanda from this funeral. I did not. Um, okay. So I... Um, I made a funeral, um, I made a video of the funeral, um, like basically a celebration of Amanda's life for the GoFundMe donors and for all of the people that helped, uh, helped with Amanda's care. And so in that video, I talked about how I renamed the scholarship program after Amanda. And so the proceeds of the supplements go towards um, the scholarship program. And the scholarship program is what yeah. Amanda was part of. Exactly. She was the first, first exactly. person you chose for, for that. Exactly. And so this is a way of adding value to people so they can put their nutrition first. They can take care of their brain and their, you know, healing and making the decision to go to rehab shouldn't be the only thing you focus on. Um, when you go to treatment and you, uh, you have a severe addiction or a brain, like or um, mental eating disorder, issue. mental health issue, um, you know, your brain is in a position where it can't absorb therapy. And then when you're malnourished, even if you get medication, you don't absorb um, the medications the same way because you know your your body just doesn't function the same. So this is just a way to boost um, to boost outcomes, to give you a nutritional boost, and ultimately to um, have a formula where we're not always asking for donations. We're actually able to sell something, and then the proceeds of that goes to helping more people. So yeah, um, I'm not big on promoting things on my channel, but. In this case, I think the the end result could be helping, yeah, absolutely. somebody like like uh, like Chris or Rebecca or a lot of the, so there's a long long list yeah. of people from my channel and, and out, outside my channel that could benefit from this. Definitely, definitely, and it, um, yeah, and it would open up so many doors because at the end of the day, it's just a money problem. It's just about paying for treatment, um, and then for the people that wanted more insight into what Amanda was receiving. Um, I uploaded her last interview that her and I did together. And then, um, you know, us talking about kind of like the issues that Amanda saw with the 30 day programs. 
And then um, I also have the, um, like a little snippet of uh, what her virtual reality treatment was like. So we filmed a little bit of the session. All right, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave a link. What, what is yeah. your, is it on your Instagram? It's on YouTube, but you can find the links to so everything where would, on my Where would Instagram. people be able to find that? Lima from Aura. Everything is Lima from Aura. L Lima from Aura. From Aura. Yeah. Okay. And you then I'll, I'll leave a link for that supplement that you're. Yeah. You'll be so you guys it. can pre-order it now, and on, then the proceeds go towards the scholarship program. That's wonderful. The scholarship yeah. program is what helped Amanda so beautifully. So. Yeah. So yeah. maybe maybe there'll be others that we can do that for. I hope I hope so. It would be a a, a big honor to be able to do this with someone else. I mean, mental, mental health is the biggest issue behind addiction anyway, I believe. I think you do too. How, how do we address the mental health that's such a, a problem for so many here? Yeah, so homelessness is not a housing issue as we discussed last time. And uh, one of the solutions that Los Angeles is currently working on is buying up a bunch of um, condos with views and giving them to homeless people. So. If Amanda was getting, um, you know, collecting a check of unemployment monthly and it wasn't doing her much good and then giving these homeless people um, housing but not really providing support, that's probably one of the biggest issues because you're just hiding the problem. You're not really resolving it. And um, since the 1980s, nothing's really changed within mental health care. Psychiatry is essentially a pseudoscience. Um, if we're just going based off of self-reporting and we're not doing any further investigation. So when you go to um, a doctor for a physical health issue, they're going to do blood work and x-rays and they're going to investigate before they diagnose and treat you. If you go to someone for a mental health condition, they're going to ask you questions. They're going to have someone describe how they're feeling and that person might not necessarily even know how to describe how they're feeling and then they're going to end up diagnosing you and treating you based off of what you said. And that's initially like the core issue of what we're trying to change. We're trying to push this, um, you know, uh, like we're trying to really push change in the mental health industry for people to start investigating further and giving additional data and an additional investigation before just diagnosing and prescribing. And medications are just a Band-Aid solution. They're not the actual um, issue. A lot of these people that you talk to, like their stories are heartbreaking and horrifying. And a lot of times it's these fe people's first times verbalizing their traumas to somebody. They don't really talk to anybody and you give them this safe space where they feel like they can share. Um, but that's, that's really why therapy is so important because when you hold something in, it becomes this deep, dark secret, and it becomes the reason that you're just not good enough. Like someone can have a drink and put it down, and someone needs that drink. And the person that needs that drink is a person that feels like they're not okay unless they have that extra something. They're not good enough. They don't like the way that they feel about themselves. And the difference between the healthy brain, what I call a trauma brain, is that the healthy brain experiences and acts and the trauma brain is so you did bad versus you are bad you know and so a lot of the people that you see on um you know on the streets they have they have very low self-esteem and they've been completely shaped by their experiences and giving them medication to numb that pain is just a very short-term solution to a much bigger crisis um, and i think that you know showing what we did for amanda um, and showing that it is possible with, you know, even the most extreme cases. And um, I think one thing that people are not familiar with about me is that Amanda is not the first case that I've worked with. I've worked with a lot of high profile people and, um, you know, for HIPAA law, I don't share um, any of the names or, you know, I can't share any of those people's stories, but I've dealt with some very complex cases. And you and I decided to team up and teach people how to do it for themselves and kind of document the process of how we can help anybody. Um, and I think that like, you know, I'm very much an introverted person. I don't like to be the center of attention and I, I, I have to force myself to make these videos and, um, you know, put myself out there. And it's really because I want people to know what I know. And I think that it's so important um, for people to understand the problem because um, Adam Grant is a professor at Wharton um, 
university and he always says that success is about contribution not competition and you know I can't change the world by myself I can't change the mental health care industry by myself I can talk about it and I can teach people but unless we all decide that this is um, important to us and that we're all going to unite together and we're going to change it and we're going to push a change in an industry that's stuck in the way that it is and doesn't want to change right now because no one's really introduced a solution. You know, all of our solutions right now are problem focused. They focus on the immediate problem. There's a bunch of tents in the street. How do we like, you know, clear the streets out? Let's put them in housing, yeah. you know? No, it seems like what we're doing now is trying to f cure a drug addiction or exactly. homelessness. Exactly. We're being really, solution based. They don't really solve the problem. Whereas if we somehow fix the mental health problems, all these problems would go away. Absolutely. And it's as simple as that. But yeah, I guess the last thing that I would want to say is that, um, you know, I'm really working on hiring more people so that I can respond to all of the emails that I get. So um, I get about like a thousand messages, whether it be like Instagram or emails or whatever. You and me both. <laughs> from people saying like, hey, my son or my daughter or my, you know, parent um, needs help and here's a story and I desperately feel for those people and I really want to help them and um, I have someone that I work with that that's making a spreadsheet of everybody's contact information and we're working on you know bringing in more people to be able to help us but that takes funding so um, I'm working on that on my end you know um, so I just want everyone to know that the people that are reaching out to me I am going to continue to, um, you know, respond. I try my best to respond to everyone. And if I missed your message to please keep reaching out because um, we will eventually get to it. And once I have more people, then, um, you know, it's a priority for me. The reason that I'm doing this is because everything that I did for Amanda, I want to be able to build a bigger team to do for everybody because it shouldn't be a privilege to get care. All right. Well, it's nice to get some closure finally to Amanda's yeah. story. I was starting to wonder what was going on after about six months of yeah. waiting, but it all makes sense. And I think there's lots, there's still a lot we can learn from, from all of this. From, Definitely. From the, Definitely. I think it's really just about mental health. Yeah. And that's not going to be an easy solution. Yeah. Well, it is if the money's there, you know? So if uh, I can help anybody if they can pay for treatment, if you can pay for treatment, it's, you know, like a snap of a finger, I can heal that person. Um, but when you say pay for treatment, that's not $30,000. That's the $30, only $30. thing that, that's the only thing that's standing between people getting yeah, but better. That, but that's not like 30, 30 or $40,000. No, it's <laughs> a significant amount. And yeah. so a lot of people reached out and they're like, oh, uh, why can't she help her sisters? Well, my sisters would cost me like 50,000 times too, like $100,000 a month. And um, that's why it's so important for me. Like I'm actually, in a way, I have a lot of gratitude. If I was able to pay for my sister's care and if we were very affluent, then I wouldn't care to help anybody else because I wouldn't understand the problem the way I do. But um, helping my sisters, being able to scale care, being able to get insurance companies to cover this treatment means that I can also help everybody, means that I have to change the, the industry and the, the way the healthcare system works to be able to, to push my sisters through. All right, Lima, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Mark, Thanks for having much. me. Great seeing you again. Thank you so much.